Did you do it right? Well, I, I, you know, yeah, within within parameters. Well, good. Uh, maybe not your parameters, but. Well, as long as you know you got green lights everywhere. I am showing. Green, green is there. good. That's all we need. That's all we need. Yeah. All right. Um. Yeah, desktop audio is muted. It's okay. But we don't need it to be muted. Yeah, the desktop audio is just. We only mute it for the intro, really. Right. And okay. It, it is muted right now. Um, it is. Well, so turn it on. I oh, am. So people I, well, can hear the awesome little. I don't know if it's any good. I don't even know if they want to hear it. Well, they're going to. How about that? <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, uh, at least for uh, right now, they're hearing it, so that's that's good. So episode two. We'll see you later, sir. Thank you so much for your help. Well, not right now. Calypso can stay. She can keep hunting. Stay. I said slay. She's trying to slay a bug. So we have we, our our little cosmic kitty is in here right now hunting a bug that she thinks that she's gonna slay. I guess. I don't know if she does. I don't want it crawling up my leg. You know, during <laughs> right. I was thinking that earlier. I don't want to imagine me on a stream and this bug starts crawling on you. I oh can. man. Dude, that would be horrible. That's why I don't. Uh, nobody needs to hear my how uh, my oct how high octavely I can go screaming. Uh, <laughs> He's like, "Is that falsetto? No, that's just really me." <laughs> that's uh, that is not a tape, <laughs> right? Uh, nor is it Memorex. Okay, so episode two, episode two, Drake equation, SETI history. Yes, sir. And then we have a comparative kind of note in there about the Fermi paradox. Don't forget that part. A comparative note on yeah, because oh. you 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 pulled it up. Yes, I did, did I not? So, uh, <clears throat> one of our, uh, or yesterday, Geek was saying, hey, can yep. you make those notes available? So we did. And the YouTube stream from yesterday's broadcast, there's been a delay. Mainly, it's YouTube. And I have it rendering in the background on YouTube because I did a manual edit uh on there and it's just kind of sitting there just waiting to get finished just, uh, uh, i think it's almost done but we just wanted to cut out the first like few minutes sure you know so that way it's a little easier on the youtube brains you know how the youtube people are they're oh, impatient yeah. they are yeah they are impatient they're not as bad at, as tiktok viewers no the tiktok viewers have got to be the worst the least patient viewer ever yeah and i say that because I mean, they. It seems like everything on there is just like super fast. Uh, do they do they limit it to like eight seconds or is that no just, no okay no <laughs> I don't know I don't know if there's a debate on that or not which one is worse YouTube Shorts or TikTok, um, but you know YouTube Shorts is obviously trying to compete in that space sure. of the of TikTok right yep. Uh, and then Twitch, you know, people just kind of understand that, hey, this is live and just stuff happens and, you know, it is what it is. Stuff and, does happen. You know, I, I feel like Twitch viewers are way more patient. And I, that's what I like about Twitch. I feel like they're uh, more grounded, more mature. I don't know if they're more mature well, or not, you know, but, you know, there's probably some goobers on here too. I'm so. sure. Uh, but anyway, so Drake equation, SETI, and, you know, there's a little correlation with the Fermi paradox like we talked about yesterday. Uh, yeah, well, I wanted to kind of, we're going to cover some of that. We'll like, cover some of that. Some of the data that's been generated since, yeah. you know, because when they, when he, when he asked that question in 1950, they had no data. There were no planets discovered outside of the solar system. In the past 50 some odd, 70 years. It has, a lot has happened. So, here we are. We have Star Trek loaded up. I'm going to get into the game. We'll kind of have it cruising in the background. I don't know what I need to do, man. Uh, but, you know, the Drake equation uh, would work out wonderfully if uh, for Star Trek. If if it was all true. Because Star Trek, it's, it acts like there's just uh, they stuff can't, everywhere. They can't... Uh, they can't turn it's around like, and it's take like a yeah step. it's like you you use the bathroom and oh hey there's another, there's another. alien race behind me yeah, sorry i yeah. didn't know hey uh, enterprise go check out this uh, we found three new planets with uh, with beings on it 
We'll check him out. Defeat, it's like telling me just to jump right in and defeat some hostiles. Well, I guess that's how you're going to get, you know, that upgrade. You're going to get that ship upgraded, the one with the... I with feel the, like I should not do that just yet. I feel like... I feel like you need to not... Get I should the, go back to... And just... Uh, I need to open up all my stuff, right? Yeah. See, see what awards and rewards I got. I, I think you need to get a ship with the I horizontal need, nacelle. I need something that's gonna like, like be like, yeah, that that's worth getting, you know. <coughs> well, excuse me. Well, you have data and uh, like crew wise, anyway. Number one, like, you know, some of this stuff I don't even know what the heck it's doing. Just collect, whatever. Collect, like, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm collecting stuff. Collect it all and sort it out. Or let God sort it out. Christopher Pike, uh, you, we, what was that? Uh, it's, it's the cards, you know, as you get, you get like cards, and then when you get, I guess, enough of that card, see, it says 238, I guess you can recruit them? I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I really would like to know a few things, and I still want to know, you know, if you're a, if you're a, an evil trader or if you're doing the you know the bidding man of, don't ask questions of the federation and uh, and god himself you shouldn't ask questions uh, questions are the foundation of of knowledge and blah 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 yeah uh, oh enrique or enrico enrico yeah he uh he was like hey man hey man hey give me another hot dog why are we alone yeah why where is everybody where the hell is everybody, and why aren't they here? Because there's people all over. I'm sure. You know, they 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 were they believe that. I, I they honestly believe that without you know any, just based on the fact that you know there's a hundred billion stars in our galaxy. Yeah. So we kind of talked a little bit about that. Um, I thought I had. Oh, it's like a different version, I guess. I don't know. I thought I had her, but whatever. Uh, it's like a purple version of, I guess. They get better as you get more badges or something. Well, you've got some of the badges best already, but yeah, yeah. I, you know, I look. I'm looking. At, it looks like an old yearbook. Uh, all these pictures and <laughs> stuff right. in there. I don't know what you know. You just don't get the class clown, I guess, or maybe you should. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, there's data. Come on, data. What's up, bud? Data's a an, an anomaly, an aberration. A, uh, you know, he's AI. Right. He's 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 a yeah. He, well, he's an android. Yes. Uh, all machine. So you made think... to look like him. Made to look like a human, and and he can eat, although he doesn't need to. He does sometimes just for social aspects. I, I always wondered now exactly, you know, you, you, you got a container in there obviously for the food that you get, and then obviously it's like a human. You also got an evacuation tube. I wonder if he really, you know, I I I'm, I, I kind of curious how how data, you know, goes number two. Or if it's you, just, you really wonder about that, or if it's just like a vacuum cleaner with okay. a bag or with a you know container. Maybe maybe uh, he eats and then I don't know. They, they you know they have dolls that'll eat and then and then crap, uh, which I thought was really unnecessary for a child. But uh, yeah, that's a bit awkward. I don't understand those. Yeah, there's yeah, I don't yeah, I don't even, I don't even think I even have anything to say. Baby poops a lot, but uh, yeah. Well, we you know what that's come up with. It is Speaking a, of the Drake equation, yeah, hey, if yeah. there's intelligent about life that. out there. Now that we're talking, about that, it ain't here, okay. Speaking of Star Trek, you know the Drake equation obviously was named after Drake. Uh, Drake the rapper. Um, no, and I did some research on that. They are not related. They they aren't. They are not related. I was disappointed to hear that. So Drake, Drake's equation. Yes. It's not. It, it is mutually exclusive. And <laughs> mutually exclusive to who? Frank Drake. Oh, well, Frank Drake is the one that came up with it. Um, he did that in 1961. Nuh-uh. Yeah, he did. Um, Frank Drake was a, yeah, he, he was a, a founding member or an early member of SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial. Um, good Lord, what is that I? How can I forget what that I mean? Intelligence. Now? Yeah, that's it. Intelligence. Yeah, that's. Uh, I lost the eye in, in more ways than one. Just now. Right. Um, look at recall. It, it's all about, you know, recall, and, and it's it's the first thing that's going to slow down when you get older. 
so take it from me. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, Frank Drake, uh, you know, he was a, a founding member of SETI, uh, 1960, I believe, is uh, uh, when that was founded. He actually did the first, Frank Drake, uh, but maybe before SETI was even really uh, incorporated, I don't know, uh, but 1959... Uh, I've seen 59 and I see 60 in, in the, the various uh, locations, but he right. uh, he conducted the uh, Project Ozma, O-Z-M-A, which was the first, uh, really the first endeavor uh, whose goal was specifically to find intelligent signals uh, with the radio telescope, and they looked at two stars that, are, that were close, fairly close uh, to Earth, uh, within 100 light years, I believe, or less, and, uh, and they found nothing. But then, you know, the, the advantages of you being able to point, you know, your telescope to that area and within the, I think it was a two day, it was a, you know, it, was, it was a short period of time, obviously the funding wasn't, wasn't huge. Right. Uh, uh, he used the 85 foot uh, dish uh, at Green Bank Observatory, uh, West Virginia, which is a rather famous, you'll see Green Bank, so Green Bank a lot. Um, but they didn't find any signals in that time frame, of course, and I don't think they expected to. But it was a it was the beginning of the search for life uh, ra with radio. And they found stuff, right? Yeah, no, no, they had no uh, nobody nobody came calling uh, during that during that time frame. I know it, this is the fascinating part to me because when we talked about this yesterday. It's been kind of like oh, Enrique said, "Hey, Enrique, yeah." Or is it Enrico? Yeah, you know what? I, 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 Enrique is so much easier. I, I, you know. Enrico said, "Hey, what's up?" And <laughs> and you know, ever since then, well, really not ever since then, but once we kind of understood or had a, a maybe a better general grasp, right, at right. the underpinnings of how sort of the universe, how big it is, and the infinite possibilities of the universe you ended up with a situation where you were like, okay, so surely we're not unique, right? Surely not. Stop calling me Shirley. Shirley? Um, yeah, I, I mean, uh, it, it's, it's, it really is, I think, kind of a, a natural to, you know, with, with all that space and all those stars to think that we would be alone. Right. But, uh, you know, maybe we aren't looking at life you know the way, uh, uh, the, the way religion of God. You know, because uh, you know in the Bible God says we're the only ones. That's why I always say uh, Christianity uh, or Judaism, I guess too, uh, is going to have a problem if we discover, if and when we discover uh, intelligent life out there, because and, and to that point, yep, the old Vatican has a pretty, uh, what do you want to call it? Uh, vested interest they have a very big interest in not finding and i say it. this because you know the vatican actually has a very strong astronomy program they do. themselves yep and this is not like you know it, it's not hush hush but they don't really talk about it right right so i find that interesting yeah I, to I, me yep. that they're that fascinated with the stars right so they want i think they want to know i think they want to be in the loop uh so to speak so you know, if something does happen, uh, they can suppress. No, I'm sorry, no, I don't mean that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm <laughs> hey man, we don't need enemies. We're just having fun oh, no, here. No, no, absolutely. You know, I, I the, and they have no problem. Uh, at least the, uh, I believe that he's a Jesuit. I think uh, they're kind of crazy, but they. Uh, I, I heard a, a priest, lifelong priest, uh, who also has a PhD in in physics. He came. And I heard him speak uh, uh, once, and and he. I share his. I have no, I've never had a problem with science and religion, with those two things meshing. I mean, it's just different way, different studies of God, you know, if, if you look at it that way. Sure. Uh, you know, I, I don't. Well, you, you know, and the, there's a lot of arguments for each direction, for sure. Uh, and then everybody has, feels like they have empirical data or truth to, to back up their situation. And, uh, I have just sort of been observing for a long time right. and, you know, I, I don't know what to make of all of it, but it's quite interesting. Let's just say that. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
it's the people that don't that feel they don't need any evidence that, that uh, you know, are kind of on the fringe to me. Uh, uh, the, if, call, you, call yourself a creationist. I mean, I'm you know, come on. I mean, you, know, you can be a creationist, but let's get real. I mean, the Earth is is, is older than seven thousand years, and I can go pick up a rock outside right now older than that. But anyway, I don't know that's a, that's a whole other topic we don't need to do. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so anyway. Uh, uh, Getting back. To, oh wait, Christopher Pike. He was on. These younger. are like, I guess, the cards that I, I get. I, I call them a card. To me, yeah. it looks like a playing card, like a baseball yeah. card, or a power up card, or it's like you get so many of them, I guess, and then you get that dude. Maybe. Now, is that pure conjecture about getting that many of them, or is there like, oh, see, I because well, look, it says one of fifteen, or you know, all right, so it says two, two of one hundred and fifteen. But I wonder, is that is that one hundred fifteen? I think you of... have to get that that card. Okay, Let's call this a card because that's really right. it. I'm opening up a chest. Yep. And this two. This is really strange. This galactic two. It's like it's got headphones comes on. Comes out. Oh, there's Leonard McCoy. He looks like the, the current actor, which I guess he would, not the dead one. <laughs> not the original. Carla. It's Cur is, it, is it Carla or is it Curla? Curla. Well, either way, it sounds like a chick's name there, buddy. Klingons don't usually call you know have chick names. He, he, really? Well, I mean, not usually. The males don't. I mean, I don't know, man. It's like grass. I wonder if he Sounds is like, grass. Well, yeah, yeah. Know your enemy. Okay, well, that's good advice. Art of war. Yeah, see like this that. stuff here. Like, I don't even know if I care about all this stuff. It's like, yeah. You see this little thing down oh, here. Oh well, that's the Marcus of yeah of the first. Oh, anyway, sorry, go on. I don't know. The 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 you know, uh, search for Spock when Spock died. Uh, and Kirk uh, was doing the the the, the doctor in the mother Marcus and found out that he has a son named Marcus who later died in the same movie and I think uh, the Klingon stabbed him that's why he had Kirk hated the Klingon so much. Ah, okay. Anyhow, enough history. So of you that. see here, you can see that I have like some of them, like three, one, two. Yeah. Yeah. But is it all consec? Is it all? Is it one out? Is one? Or are there any repeats of two? I don't wonder if there's more than one list. Or if it's all one long list. Anyway, probably not going to find out just by the occasional glance. Oh, Officer 718? Now, does that mean that he's expendable? or That's really a name. I don't know who these people are. Yeah, I, I, I don't need... I'm not, I'm not <laughs> hey, getting is that... either. You what? That's hilarious. Which one? Look at the name. Yeah, the... It's... It, the the jackal, the D J A O K O. That's okay. It's meant to look like the D J oh. Steve Aoki. Oh, that's who that is. Really? And I I'm guessing, but I'm pretty sure that's who that's supposed to be. I, because I, why would it say D J Aoki and it looks like that dude that throws cakes at people's faces while he's mixing his beeps and boops? See, I. I, that's good, you know. We need. I'm glad you. I'm, I'm glad you know that world because I didn't, and I didn't know there was an Aoki. I guess they 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 just make up new ones so that way they can have a fan card, you know, in these games. Yeah, I guess. And why not? They probably a... paid them fifty bucks or something. So <laughs> hey, can we can well, we use your dumb name or something? Yeah, probably fifty bucks sounds right. Any more than that, they'd be you know probably overpaid. I mean, I don't know his level of fame. Uh, you know, I mean, him. he's no fat boy slim though. I do know the fat boy Slim. Yeah, uh, I, I, has he ever thrown a cake at somebody while he's while he's? No, oh, he has no need to pull no. like shenanigans. And he's and he's busy because his stuff is is complex. I would imagine he's busy. Counting, well, he's busy in counting money and mentally counting his money. I would. Well, it's just it's kind of nice to see somebody of that that long that's still doing it and having fun that's all he cares right. about is trying to have fun and make people laugh and smile well, i guess not laugh but smile for sure but yeah. you know some of his stuff is a little comical yeah I, you he, know he's he's got a he got a sense of humor which is always a good thing to have i think you got to have it to survive for too long in any in any industry so the drake equation yes um, now, again we were saying this a minute ago we I, I find it interesting how star trek is a big departure or it would reinforce the drake equation maybe you think uh roddenberry is that how you say it Rudy? gene roddenberry the roddenberry. the uh the, the, the exalted one <laughs> i 
Uh, okay. He he was revered. I mean revered, and I, I God rest you know rest in peace. Sure. Uh, but he uh, yeah he was he was it. He was the the man. He created all of it. And uh, oh look, I can join these groups. Oh, maybe you should find one. Is there a a Gene Roddenberry tribute group or anything? Or? <laughs> I don't know. Man. They've never mentioned Gene Roddenberry, uh, which I guess that would be you know hard to do since it's their fiction and he created them. But yeah, but they could. Uh, they could reference him. Uh, oh, yeah, the creator of some sci-fi show in the '60s. What relevance does that have to do with with this, Spock? Oh, whatever. Anyway, live long and prosper. Um, yeah. So, well, Frank Drake. Uh, Frank you know, Drake. He he was uh you know he he the the Drake equation is not not meant to quantify the number of intelligent civilizations in the in the uh, Milky Way or in the in our galaxy. Yeah. Uh, really, because it, 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 you can't when when the variables are such. And I'll go over that real quickly here in, a, in just a gif in just a minute. Um, but the uh, he, he did it to really to engender discussion and, and and talk, and and it has succeeded far beyond I'm sure his expectations. Uh, I mean, there are you know the, the groups, there are meetings on it, there are symposiums. Uh, the, the Drake equation was uh, was absolutely he saw a need for it. It's like a almost looks like a prop, right? But it it uh, it, it it was definitely needed. You know, you know uh, the the space uh, two thousand one Space Odyssey. Did you see that excellent, wonderful movie, Deborah? With the obelisk. Okay, I did see two thousand one Space Odyssey, and I also saw twenty ten. Yeah, I, I I really liked that too. Twenty ten. I, I liked it. Go ahead and bog, go ahead and dog on it. Let me let me just say this. Okay. I thought 2010 was very entertaining. I thought 20, 2001 was just about the biggest yawn you could have. Oh. I mean, it was just this monotonous yawn. And I'm just like, mm. I get it if you're one of these people that like to read books on a regular basis or you <laughs> like to sit there and watch, you know, cats clean themselves. Oh, my God. Uh, well, you don't enjoy that because you have a cat. I don't. But I, I'm not, I'm not a How, fan. Oh, but it, the, but the, it, the, the, the art of it, the, 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 the art the, of what? The, the movie. My God, it was, a, it was a spectacular. Uh, I was, I was at the edge of my seat the entire movie. That's because so generationally, when, when did it come out in the sixties? Yeah, it was six, okay, so it came out in sixty nine, sixty eight. Right, and back then there wasn't anything like Star Trek was the closest thing, and then that from a uh, production value, there was no comparison from no, Star, Star Wars, Trek to two thousand one. Star Wars came sh shortly after, though. Well, that, that's ten years later. No, Star I Wars. I said Star Trek. Oh no, but Star Wars came out in there right, what seventy one or two, the first one. No, really, no, bro. Um. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. No, no. And then it was eighty, seventy nine, maybe seventy nine. Yeah, I but think. but that just goes to show you how brilliant so it was. It's about. Well, I know. So I, I. So from a view, like if you wanted to call it like a cinema, cinema, cinematic or a cinema. I mean, the, the yeah, visual. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The visual. Like. All right. So it was like artfully done. All right. Okay. Oh, great. Was, you but, know what? Like. Yeah. I mean. But how could I you? How know. could you? How could you be yawning? It was a, it was a story of and that and that obelisk didn't that just fascinate you on why? No, it, I thought it was dumb. Uh, a big giant brick it was, floating around was going to change. Like it was not the dimensions of a brick, but anyway, it was re it was rectangular for sure. Um, I know, man. I'm just ragging on it, floating around, uh, creating civilizations and. Uh, Obviously, a higher, a higher, their, their being a higher. That's how they, that's how they let themselves be known, or how they traveled. But the, with an obelisk, you might, we might have already met extraterrestrials and just not noticed it. You would have called it a. Oh, look at that brick! I'm not going to pay attention to it. And I would have probably said the same. But that was, I'm sorry, it was brilliant. Uh, the story. <laughs> okay, anyway. uh, look, I, I get for what. If you want to slap. No, I, I. So for what you were referring to, I, I agree. I just don't think it was that entertaining. <laughs> okay, well, sorry. You know, I, 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 that's I know, what, I know. What makes the world go, what makes the world go around. There's, you know, uh, 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 people like me that think, you know, I didn't think I thought that properly, but compared to this, in this particular subject, you know, you're well, you know, other people share your opinion. I'm sure. I don't know any. I of don't them. know that they do, man. I'm not saying my opinion is 
it just like is the end all be all for sure. But I, I feel like it's you know there's probably a lot of people who aren't brave enough to say what you said, who feel the same way. It just it yeah, just it's... felt like I was like okay. Well, what is but it this had to be a slow, it had to be a natural pace of movie, or otherwise they couldn't, you know, speed up too, too many things. But it did jump from the, you know, the. Now you gotta like the the monkey scene where, you know, it taught all of a sudden it taught to tools, and then the, then they you know what they do with the tools. The first thing they did with the tools, uh, they beat the shit out of the other monkeys, the, the other tribe monkeys. Right. I mean, beat them senseless. Uh, and then he throws up the, you know, the, well, how about that transition? He throws up the bone, the femur, and. It, Rotating and then 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 they shoot to the ship. That's uh, you know and and let me tell you, you you can say it's boring, but when that when they when they filmed that pen floating and turning, um, when the when the Floyd was on his way to the moon, right? Uh, and they're, and they're playing the Blue Danube, Blue Danube Waltz, which I always liked that song. Uh, I mean that was just I was I'm sorry I if 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 I hadn't been so young I probably would have had an erection the entire time, bro. I'd hate to be that way. But That's fair. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm sitting here not looking at the chat. Who's uh, been on the chat? Been, well, there was nobody for a while, and now all of a sudden we got uh, Geek. What's up, back. Geek? And uh, well, of course, uh, the uh, our our CEO. Uh, Theo's watching just to make sure we don't screw up. Des Miguel. Uh, so Geek is the uh, so we have Geek. <laughs> That's okay. Hi, Geek. Glad it, take, to see it you. takes one. <laughs> it only is right. It only takes one. That's very true. And uh, he certainly. And killed. we 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 have made a lot of progress in twenty four hours. Have we? So yes. We, we I mean, have. Yeah. I mean, we have. Yes. So we actually have so much information we haven't talked about. I know any we've of not it. talked about any of it. We have like probably four times the amount of information versus yesterday, and I, you know, we have we just been having fun, just kind of just pontificating, I guess. Really. Yes, I like to pontificate. It is fun. It is. I mean, to a degree, as long as you can, you know, hold your own, right? Exactly. And, uh, you know, when I pontificate, my ego is such that I'll always hold my own. <laughs> I just I just know that everybody is waiting, waiting anxiously for my next Oh, yeah, they probably are, bro. Yeah. Well, at least, you know, geek. One person, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, at least geek is. But, uh, all right, well, then maybe perhaps uh, we should get on to... Um, yes, Drake Equation. So on to that. I think that's probably... Enough. The geek is a man of science, I guess. Uh, oh, is <laughs> um, So, I yes, I agree. Well, let me... Uh, why, why don't we... Why don't we... We're talking about this Drake Equation so much. Why don't I go through what the Drake Equation is? I mean, I mean, the variables of it. Okay. And I, and I would like to have had a, vi a visual on this, but I didn't... I didn't... I, I just didn't get it together. I mean, I could hold this up to the camera. Do you think that would... No. No, that's cheesy. We aren't cheesy. Cheesy. Anyway, the, the, the Drake equation is, uh, yeah, it's, a, it, it's again, it, it, he didn't come up with it to give a number necessarily per se. Uh, okay. Just really to engender discussion because all of the variables are completely, almost all subjective except for the first one, uh, which is, uh, it, it's represented as N is, a, is going to be the number of... Of, of observed of civilization, advanced civilizations in the Milky Way. Uh, and that N equals R, and then the little subscript star, is the rate of formation of stars in our galaxy. Okay. And the rate of formation. And, and that's something we can get, we can guess, we can get pretty close to. Uh, it's a scientific thing, and so no problem with that. Uh, so you got the, the first variable R, and then that's times uh, F, F uh, variable F sub I, or F sub R, I'm sorry. And that's the fraction of those stars with planets. Okay. So we've got the, the, the number, of, we've got about the, with the rate of star formation, we, we can keep track pretty much of how many stars we have. And then you multiply that by the fraction of, uh, of those stars that, that have planets. Now, back then, they didn't know. They didn't have any evidence of, of, of planets. Right. We have quite a bit of them, quite a bit now. Um, anyway, the next uh, variable in that would be uh, N sub E. And that is the number of planets per solar system in the golden the Goldilocks zone. Sorry. Sure. Uh, of, the, of the stars that have planets, how many of those are in that distance uh, from the sun, from their star, where liquid water can can exist? And remember, yesterday we said we think there's 16. I believe that. Yes, I believe that, that number was, hasn't changed. Well. Um, yeah, no, oh, that's right. That is that is what we yeah, that is what we looked up. Um, yeah, yeah. It seems like there's 
Should be. I don't so know. remember that number when we talk later about how many they theorize. Now maybe that's. I think we asked about Earth-like planets. No, think, it was ha- habitable zone. Had ha- ha- Yeah, it was. I think the. Well, okay. Let, let's uh, let's let's. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not going to doubt you on that one. Though. No, you can't. <laughs> well, then, then I shan't. I shan't. You shan't yourself? What no, you I don't think that's. I wonder if that's really a word. I, I shan't. Is it? I, I don't know. know if it is shan't. It's kind of funny. Uh, anyway, the next uh, the next variable is uh, going to be the, uh, the the number of suitable planets where life can actually. Uh, well, where life actually appears. So we've got the number. So with ours, with ours, you know, you said 16. That's very small that we've discovered so far. There's certainly more of them, but ones we discovered. Uh, then there'll be the fraction of those uh, where life actually does appear. And then you multiply again by a, another f variable. Uh, that's a fraction of planets uh, with life where intelligent life emerges. So, you, you know, you, you can have life. But it needs to be intelligent. Uh, and then you multiply that by another f variable, which is the fraction of of uh, civilizations that develop the technology then to uh, broadcast into space or do whatever they do that can be detected. Right. They have to be uh, detectable. If they get an intelligent species, a, a planet, if they just and they're xenophobes or they just you know are terrified, then that's you know they're not going to ever find them probably. Sure. Um, and then the uh, let's see, I did the, uh, the, 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 the and then the, then times L is the last variable is the length of time such civilizations are broadcasting on air, basically. Okay. And then that gives you a number that is to represent you know the number of planets that we could the number of yeah that we could that, that are detectable in our in our Milky Way. And and those those answers range from just I mean. They range from uh, the uh, kind of the skeptic, pessimistic scientists who, uh, who dozens, maybe a dozen, all the way to 300 million. So right. Somewhere, it, well, it lies somewhere in between. and that, That's a big difference. It's a huge difference, and it all depends on how you're filling these variables up, uh, optimistically, with, you know, or, or very, very, very dis- dis- you know, discriminately. Uh, uh, with, and I, I would prefer to have a slightly harder uh, uh, guidelines to get those numbers down a little bit, or more realistic maybe. But it could be three hundred million. That's like Star I think Trek. that was just back then they just didn't have enough information, right? Um, well, they didn't have any really. But but that's the thing about this equation; it, it, it engenders you to think about it. Uh, not, it's certainly not a not an accurate one. But these numbers that I, I quoted are they, they they range from back to the back to sixty one when he came up with it. All the way to to this to the 2020s, right? Um, a group uh, early early in this decade uh, came out, and they were the pessimistic side. They said, you know, they, they, their answer was I think a dozen, maybe two dozen. Uh, but then, very recently, also uh, they they said because of uh, uh, because we're finding so many exoplanets uh, that perhaps it's in the hundred million. I think that's probably a little high. I think it is high because that I'm not. We're not just talking about civilizations. There may be a hundred million civilizations, but to fit all that criteria, you know, to be advanced, to be uh, broadcasting, and to be detectable, and not destroy right. themselves. Um, although that's another. That's a little bit later. We're talking about that. But so anyway, the Drake equation. That's it. It's a uh, like I said, not not a real equation, but certainly. Uh, oh wait, and here, I'm here to geek is again. Uh, uh, of the 1,780 confirmed planets beyond our solar system, as many as 16 are located in their star's habitable zone, where conditions are neither too hot nor too cold, yet just like Goldilocks, we had to get it just right. According to the National Geographic, so you guys are correct. Uh, the only thing I would uh, change on that is that we have actually, uh, they have actually discovered 5,535 planets outside our solar system. Yeah, and the system. Kepler was like 2,500 of those. 2,700, uh, 20, yeah. that one satellite alone. Yeah, it, It's it's almost every week-ish right yeah. now. And so, depending on what year you're looking that up. 69 this year? Uh, that, geek, that, that that number is not really, it's it's a, it's a lot less, but it's, a, you could have, that number could have been a year ago, two years ago. I, I don't know really the, the, 
It, it goes so fast. So. It does. We've been trying to cat, not catalog, but we've been trying to find the, the most current information possible. So that way, like in real time, as we do the dates, like with the kind of the format, how I did the paper today uh, that you saw mm -hmm. the link to, we already have that new link generated that we'll, we'll put out with all this information that we curated to, for today. <clears throat> and then, so like when we get to that, that point where we're going to talk about like, oh, how many have been discovered or what is the, you know, updates from the Kepler telescope, uh, we will try to have that relevant information sort of sure. hopefully given like an extra, uh, like data point, I guess, just out there to exist. So therefore it's hopefully easy for people to find. Yes. Um, yeah. Like in a very bite sized sort of situation. And, and that's, something that one of the dentists recommended who's also some viewers so i appreciate that uh we wanted to kind of make sure that the information was in a way that you could sit there and like really like sink your teeth into quickly mm -hmm. right because like we a i'm not like i don't what is it like to be a specialist in any sort of field with this like you you've got to have years and years and years of it and since I'm a hobbyist, we'll call it, right? Yes. Uh, Definitely. I want to find something that was easy and obtainable. And I feel like we're kind of on that path now. It feels pretty good. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, Geek, uh, it says, holy cow, that number is really out of date. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but no, no, no <laughs> fault of your own. Uh, yeah, I mean, it ain't your fault, bro. It's not like anything you can do about it. You know? it, 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 it goes, well, we, what did they say? We have 69 this year. Yeah. It, it seems kind of low. Uh, cause... Is that a toilet? What is that? I don't know. Well, that, oh, my God. I don't, well, hey, I don't they, even know what that is. You know, they got to they gotta do it out there. Uh, I don't even, it looks weird. It's just Battleship. Oh, it says, but, a, it says design. Oh, but uh, Geek asked, is there a site that I can go uh, to and, and keep up to date with it? And there is, actually. Uh, and I'm trying to remember. You don't remember that, do you? No, I, I don't. It was it was a it was a NASA, I believe site. I'll, I'll get it's that. It's on NASA's page, and it, or it is NASA an has the information. Yeah. So NASA has a page, and it's I, an interactive. It's an interactive like map where you can sort them any way you want, but it'll or or sort through them and well, read. That's them. the ESA map. Yeah, that's yep, that's it. Yeah. So we'll when when on Discord we, we'll we're going to start curating a link list. Right is what we'll end up doing. I can we can I can, we can send, I can send that link out after 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 tonight because I have it on I have that site. Yeah, we'll we'll put it in YouTube and then put it in Discord. Very good, because that's I mean, it, and that's really the reason why we started the Discord server too. Thank you, the Dennises. We're like, hey, you know, you should try this. And they're like, okay, uh, uh, so the having that information, I feel like in a, in a easy format like discord yeah it's going to be helpful for everybody that wants to be a part of that community i think right so. i'm just learning about discord so I'm, I'm not really up to speed on it, it what, what all it can do other than the messaging part of it but anyway i will learn build that. an over can i build it now a corvette yeah i wonder i guess they're calling that one the corvette based on the orion battleship i don't know that's a Let's do some level. Yeah, I'll attack that. You base. really need to destroy somebody, I think. Have you I done? need to just, yeah. I, you, you know what? I need to lower the Drake equation here. Lower. Well, yeah, well, uh, maybe not. You're not going to kill the whole civilization, are you? Uh, I'm doing it one uh, destroyer at a time. At a time. I, guess, so I don't know. There you go. You'll get it eventually. We'll, 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 we'll notch one off the, off the number. Yeah, but, you know, it would be wonderful. Uh, you know, Star Trek was a very optimistic future. Uh, Except maybe in the number of uh, civilizations. I mean, <laughs> right. good, let's tell you, good Lord, you would want to take a break once in a while. I know, right? We're having to either fight somebody off or, or, or help them because they're, they they didn't do as well <laughs> getting past their technology. Um, so anyway, that's the Drake Equation, and that's what it's yeah, all about. Yeah, the Drake Equation, it's this loose sort of fitting model to kind of like you said to get the conversation going, oh right? let me just say one thing and say one thing on that uh and it's been it's been looked at you know and gone back to in 2012 uh the drake equation was revisited in a uh a paper by uh, uh adam frank 
and Woodruff Sullivan, who are some, uh, some, some physicists, who argue that the number of advanced civilizations in the observable universe is likely to be much higher than previously thought. So it's, you know, you got some groups uh, kind of saying, oh, it's less, and some, some coming out with writing papers uh, uh, saying that they think it's, you know, because of various factors, it's going to be much higher. So maybe someday we'll know. But we only need maybe. one. Uh, there's your there's your your property, which is you know telling me that you are, you're not poor. What? Say well, that that's again? your you said that's yours, right? Your home, so your star base, your whatever. Yeah. You got an academy on there, and it's got, this shipyard's level five. I need to make. Yeah, you got five levels of oh, shipyards. Good job. Oh, no, I gotta get it upgraded. And you're complaining about being one of the poor. Hmm. Bro, <laughs> don't even start with me. Sounds like you're the one percenter if you. I, I need to upgrade my shipyard. That's my problem. Yeah, you do because you need to make ships that have horizontal nacelles. Bro, you need to just fly. To, would you fly? Would you do me a favor and fly at like ninety degrees, oriented ninety degrees from where you're at? I need a tight. Oh, see, I'm getting a lot of stuff added now that I leveled up. I'm just buzzing through this, man. But. Is it, I don't. I still don't really understand, but that's all right, though. I, you know, you have to build all this stuff. People go through life before they understand things. Sometimes, many years. Yeah. Okay. You'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. All of a sudden, it'll just dawn on us. Uh, like a physics professor I had, he said, "You, you go through." So and this you, has to be a level three. I thought you were level five. Man, shut shut the front door. Well, okay, I, I will. I'll shut the back door too if it helps. You can answer one question. If you if you can answer one question a session about this game, I would. Okay, you know. I'm not. No, I'm not. I don't mean to be dogging on you. I, I'd you be the should, same. man. I don't know. I'm just like floating through this thing. I mean, I'm just glad you're still alive. I just want it to be a level three. I mean, technically, I own half of everything you do in this in this game. So. I guess <laughs> technically. Oh no! It, it's I, I checked with the uh, cosmic lawyer, and yeah. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Level five. No, he did. R &D. He did so remind me R &D. that. Oh, so this is R and D. He did remind me that it's all fantasy and it's worth nothing. But uh, you know, still. Yeah, probably. Oh, you can speed things up again. Yeah, I got a bunch of those time things. Okay, and do wow. I have enough to build a Corvette yet? Oh, okay, I can upgrade it now. Well, that's that's a good. Nice looking ship, that Corvette. Man, we can speed that up because I got a few of them time tokens. See, I made up a new name. Oh, can I do anything? Oh, 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 what is that? Oh, yay, look, I can build it. Oh, you got the... Oh, yeah. You know, I'm kind of sad that I can't bitch about the nacelles now. How can I... I can speed it up a little bit here. I want to get my ship, man. I imagine. Orion Corvette. Hmm. Look, I sped it up enough. Oh, there you go. Look at that brand Look new thing. Look at that. It looks like a... Um, weird. It looks like an Orion Corvette, I guess. <laughs> I'm not sure what that would be. Yeah, there you go. Don't don't hit the doors on the way out. It doesn't have any nacelles. It just looks like a weird... They're internal, I, I'm guessing. Uh, but they're, but I'm going to count those two as... Uh, and then they're, they're horizontal, so I'm happy. I'm going to miss complaining about the other one, though, a little bit. Wow, I heard that. Isn't that cool? It was. Did you just enter Station's now here? available to power and maintain a second dry dock. Do you want to do that? Dry well, dock, dry dock. Of course you do. Dry docks replacing the... Blah, 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 blah. So you can repair your... I, I don't... I read some of this, but not enough, probably, I guess. Are you launching missiles? No, I'm picking out my loots. Oh, but maybe you're bombing Gaza, Gaza or Israel, one of the two. What? His missiles are in the news, you know, lately. That's what. That's what. Yeah, I just uh, we're. I think we're just doing no go zone here because it's like too stressful in the world, and then people absolutely. are here for escapism. So. I absolutely. Yeah, I just just. It's like that's the most powerful thing you can do is when. That stuff is going on, and you just can't absorb it. Just turn it off. Yeah. Just 
I mean, it really is the, the healthiest Turn thing. it off if you can. If you can. Now, it's tragic. I don't want to get into it, but it is, there's yeah. a lot of tragic things in this planet. And yes, I guess maybe that's why we sit here and talk about searching for stuff, right? I, I think that is exactly why I think the human mind has to, you know, uh, I mean, it has to live and go on and can't do that wallowing and in, in worrying about things that you have no control over anyway. Right. Yes, sir. Well, I'm going to recall that ship and get her fixed up. Oh, you're still driving the other one. Well, yeah, I, but I have to oh. switch them somehow, I guess. I got to figure that part out. You need to get that in dry dock so you can fix it. Yep, it's headed there right now. All right, so Fermi Paradox, how does it correlate at all? Well, how do you mean? I mean, um, is there any correlation to the Drake equation at all? Well, uh, just in the. Just in the sense of... Uh, like, how does it fit in, I wonder? Or does it? I feel like it does. It does. It, it really does. Uh, it, the Drake equation would just be a tool in which to uh, either... Either it's going to give you a very large number, in which case then you're going to be more exasperated. Um, it's going to be more of a paradox. Uh, why, you know, if, if we if we come out with 100 million civilizations that, that we could detect, and we still haven't detected any of them, Whereas, or if it's a dozen, then maybe that could explain, make it less of a paradox. Um, uh, in fact, I think we should cover a few things on, uh, on a few of the arguments or a few of the, the reasoning behind uh, why we haven't detected or why we should be able to detect. Okay. And, there's, there's, and there, there, believe me, there are as many as there are uh, people. <laughs> Uh, you you could come up with them. You could sit down all day and come up with with new I, new reasons, may or why new scenarios. But uh, there's some general ones, and that's uh, um, but many many arguments you know, for the Fermi paradox. Some of the most common include the the vastness of the universe. Right. Uh, you know, the Milky Way contains uh, hundreds of billions of stars, and there are billions of galaxies. You know, in the universe. Uh, now. We're only talking really about our galaxy because, you know, traveling within our galaxy is impossible for us now, let alone intergalactic. Sure. Uh, you know, it'd take a billion, I think I read, it'd take a billion years, uh, even sped up a little bit to get to the Andromeda galaxy, our sister galaxy. And when we can just sit here and wait for it to come to us, because we're, we're going to have a collision here in the, near, in, the, in, the, in the far future. Sure. But, uh, so with the vastness of space, uh, the number, just the sheer number of stars, uh, you know, would lend itself to believe that there's got to be civilizations. Now, the age of the universe is another thing. 13.8 billion years old. Plenty of time. Plenty of time for civilizations to have come, you know, uh, come and gone, I would imagine. Uh, you know, we're, what, our our, our, um, our Earth is four and a half billion years old. Right. And, and it, it took a good long time for us to get here. Because we, you know, we only occupy the last, <laughs> last very small segment of, uh, of the history of the of our planet, our solar system. So, but even with that, you know, we're, it's still plenty of time for other civilizations to have, uh, you know, to be there. So, um, let's see, there are uh, uh, the abundance, the abundance of the of the, you know. The, Everything out there that we need for life, uh, to, for proto-life anyway, the complex chemical equations to, uh, to occur, you know, all, all the elements that are needed are out there in, in right. abundance. You know, hydrogen, certainly, uh, uh, you know, the building blocks, the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, uh, there, there's no shortage of those. So that should lend itself to, to, to at least early life, proto-life, uh, sure. whether it goes on or not. And then uh, obviously as we, as we've, are discovering with the uh, uh, with the planets uh, uh, the the prevalence of, of of the planets out there. I mean, five thousand five hundred and thirty-five. I think we've discovered no the exoplanets. Yeah, exoplanets. Yeah, just 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 it, you know we've only looked at a tiny tiny portion of you know of space, and and we're out in the sticks too. So think about it in the urban area. We we may be you could you know we may be like Star Trek at least as far as exoplanets go. Yeah, can't turn around without bumping into one. But uh, so I mean those are those, and it's funny that those, many of those are, all, are are also arguments for the other side. <laughs> uh, uh, so it's it's kind of uh, kind of interesting how you can you can play that off uh, either way. Um, but the um, 
uh, th those are the those are the main kind of arguments for why it exists, why the why the Fermi paradox may may be a paradox. Sure. So uh, anyway, that's. Uh, uh, well, I feel like you know they like kind of like what. Okay, so Drake, you know, he was like, I guess we got to come up with an equation just to get the conversation going. Right. So <clears throat> now he was involved with SETI, though, right? Oh yeah, he was. He was. Yeah, he was there from the beginning. And in fact, he came up with the uh, Drake equation for uh, uh, the first annual conference of of, uh, of astronomers uh, looking for extraterrestrial life. Uh, again, at the Green Banks uh, Observatory Radio Telescope Observatory uh, in Virginia, there. I think. Sure. Uh, so he kind of, I can, I can see him, like the night before or whatever. Uh, I'm sure he's a busy man. You know, thinking, oh, shoot, come up with that equation. <laughs> okay, I got to get that down and, and do it for the for the conference tomorrow. But uh, yeah, he he did unveil it there. I think it was 1961, and uh, it's kind of like one of the first SETI meetings uh, uh, or, or, or symposiums that you know was opened up. To, uh, right. Discuss it publicly, and uh, I, I guess at that point it hadn't, you know, had become a kind of a. a it, it's not a stigma for an, a for a scientist to ask those questions, but you know, uh, later on, if you were a pilot and you saw a UFO, you, uh, you probably wouldn't report it if, unless you uh, just because of the the stigma that would go along with it. Sure. And all the paperwork probably didn't help either. But I don't think uh, many. Well, you know, I, I I have my opinion on UFOs, and I'm sure everyone else does too, but. Well, I feel like um, when you talk about swap and ship, I get a little confused here because I want to, I thought I could, anyway, I'm a little confused on if I can, oh, look, I guess, I, oh, I can select it now. There you go. Hey, you worked it out there. I, Dang, I, I don't, I not, you worked it out? a little bit painful. I still don't know what you were, what you're talking about. All I was trying to do is select the ship. Oh, yeah. The, so that I could fly in it or and whatever are you? you want to call it. Are you? Did you get the new ship? I did. Yeah, it's yeah. I got it. We're ready to rock. I want to see you uh, blow somebody up. Well, let's go here, Brave New Worlds. I don't know why we're going here. What? Well, uh, oh, an Aldous Huxley book. Uh, so the so SETI, it was. Well, let's back up a little bit because I feel like. What are some? So they're SETI, yeah, right? They're SETI. But since SETI, there are many notable what that is now floating around. Or where do you want to like prelude into this? Um, well, many notable. Well, I just didn't know if you wanted to go start with SETI first, the history of SETI, and then we go into the many, many, many new sort of apparatuses now that we have I oh guess. Cer certainly the, yeah. the exoplanet discovery kind of well this all instrument. the different things that are that they're using sure. for exoplanets now yeah uh yeah uh, and and just uh well and you know it might be helpful uh to go into the you know people uh, you, I, in fact i did uh, initially i i wondered but how do they you know how do how do we discover a planet a hundred light years away, that you know, you, we can barely see. You can't see the star from with the naked eye, um, and I, I'm glad you asked that question because uh, it's uh, it's it's interesting. Uh, there's really two, and there's really only. Well, there, traditionally there have been two ways that that's right. done, and that's either by uh, measuring the. Uh, basically, it's a perturbation the, the wobble of a star. Uh, which, which, because, because everything, even our sun wobbles, uh, we yep. go around each other, the it's sun not and just our, a dance at the local club. Yeah. Now, now when you got someone like the sun with the mass, you know, the earth, it, it's, you don't see the sun going around the earth, but it technically it does, or they go around a, a, a point, a center, a center point, well, it makes sure. like a center of gravity for the two. Uh, uh, now that's deep within the sun, but the sun does turn at the, on that point. Uh, so they, they look for the, uh, the, uh, change in velocity basically of, of this star, this pinpoint of light. And is there any, is there any, is there any kind of a change at all, which would indicate and tells them that there's a body, a massive body uh, orbiting it. And that's where it, uh, you know, and it, that didn't, I mean, we 
that was our original first method, right? Uh, that that and uh, uh, the uh, it's it's the uh, 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 the change in the apparent brightness. Oh, uh, yeah. they call it the transit uh, uh, method. Uh, it, it's it's well because if a if a star is you know, orbiting, and we have to be facing the right way in the in the plane of that ecliptic of, of their plane. Right. Uh, but when the when the when the when the planet comes in front of the star. In between us and the star, then there is a slight dimming uh, of the light that we can measure, uh, and that's periodic. And then we know then also that there's a planet around there, and then that's how that's the two traditional methods that are still still being still used today. We've got some uh, you know, the advantage of, uh, of of like the uh, the James Webb telescope is so powerful; they can actually uh, it, it can also you know certainly discover a planet that way. But it can also look at the planet's atmosphere. Sure. And 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 by what you know by what we're receiving can can tell some some things. But it, it's just amazing what what that telescope how how how, how powerful it is. Um, uh, they had some other methods. Uh, you always with light and spectro spectroscopic analysis, uh, telling if there's an element. It, you know, it puts out that spectrum of light uh, at different wavelengths and. And there'll be bright emission lines, they call them, and that means, well, that element exists, and it's being, you know, it, it, it's being, it's it, the the emissions are coming at that wavelength, therefore that element's there, and it's it's being uh, we're being seen it that way. Also, if it's a dark line, then they uh, they can tell that there's an element. That element is is there, and it's blocking that that particular wavelength of light. But anyway, that's. Um, it's it's quite fascinating how they uh, how creative they can get on some of that. Sure. Oh, we got a first time chat. Uh, there you go. Here, uh, Lightning Hawk. Oh, Lightning, we have it. So we have new chatter. New well, chatter. Welcome. Hello, hello to you, Lightning Hawk. We appreciate you stopping by. Absolutely, very much so. Um, okay, what are the uh, yes. Uh, so that that's uh you know the, the two methods that, that are that have been employed traditionally and, and still are being employed. Right. And so they can the the, the newer telescopes, uh, the the Kepler, for instance, and 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 uh, some of the others. Really, what they do, they 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 look for the same things, but they can do it on a much wider field of view. They they can look at more stars at once, and that's how they can you know I think the numbers have increased so greatly. Uh, sure. Uh, refining those methods um let's see let me see what uh let's which see. so we went from drake equation to we talked a little bit about the fermi fermi paradox again and kind of maybe that maybe that was some i don't know if it pushed frank drake to maybe think about doing that uh and then we we mentioned SETI, but we really haven't gotten into it a whole lot. Or did we go? We didn't because we didn't go went over the origin of that, did we? Well, uh, um, I, I think uh, not specifically. Perhaps uh, you know, Drake was there at the beginning. There, there are two gentlemen, actually, who uh, you know were, were on the you know incorporating it, I guess, uh, or getting it getting it established. Right. Um, uh, they were there all along. Uh, Carl, here, let me let me get to this point. Carl Sagan, uh, of course, uh, uh, spurred it on in the '80s, sure, or late '70s and '80s with uh, when he wrote the. I heard, I heard he's his name has been thrown around before. Well, uh, certainly he's a he's a legend in uh, in you know in the astronomical uh, scientific uh, kind of. He was one of the first to really be able to communicate, and and of course his show Cosmos. Right. Uh, you know, millions of people watched that, and it was quite fascinating. I was I was glued to the television. I remember every time every episode that was on, and then then of course he everyone made fun of the way he said billions, billions and billions, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and, and, yeah. But he was a great he was a great a great communicator. I actually saw him speak at, at SMU in 1984 or five, I believe, and uh, him and his wife who pretty she, old there, fella. She didn't speak, but. He introduced her as uh, his CEO, I think. Uh oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I, I, I knew he was sincere then because uh, he's right. Uh, the wife is usually the 
She may not always be behind the scenes, but she's definitely pulling the strings, running the show. Right. But uh, yeah, and then he he wrote the, the book Contact. Uh, uh, kind of gave some notoriety, and again, the city is like uh, has been. Uh, I don't know. In the scientific community, they were they were uh, you know not, maybe not a laughing stock, but certainly not appreciated or, or respected. Uh, a lot of scientists saw it as a as a waste of time, a waste of, of valuable telescope time, and everybody was always fighting, you know, and still are for for that telescope time. Yeah, and that's where, you know, again, that was some of the origin for us wanting to do this because you know, starting next week, we'll we'll we may even do it this week if we have some extra time is uh start kind of reviewing like what's going on uh but we wanted to give some backstory uh if you notice the path that we're on right now it's a little bit about like if you look at what's going on now okay so okay, kirk we pulled up yep. some information you, i know you got a bunch of pages there how many how, how many i guess we'll call them space bound apparatuses that are uh doing this right now so how many are we talking about that 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 are like the most prominent ones uh, and then obviously we have earthbound too but i'm talking i'm talking about really space yeah uh the yeah the earthbound ones are, are certainly they're doing what they can do uh we're, we're talking about four or five and i got that right here as a matter of fact because we uh, had one for how long think about it the hubble was it's been out there it's barely if if it's still being used it's barely right now because it's had so many problems here in the past three or four years uh and i feel like you know james webb coming on the scene kind of sort of took a lot of oh yeah you my, know my stardust we'll call it away from everybody else and then since then you know they're you it, know it's we still uh, i think the hubble still uh it's still used obviously and, and and can be valuable but uh you know it's it's it, 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 it pales, of course, in comparison to what the James West can do. Um, but then again, that's also probably the hardest, from the hardest time to book. Uh, uh, every, anyway, you know, certainly in the scientific community, scientific world. Yeah, um, so well, you have to obviously pine for it, I guess, a little bit, uh, well, as you would with any other situation. And, you yeah, and, and your project has to certainly uh, merit uh, approval. Uh, uh, and I don't know that, well, you know, obviously, uh, it has, uh, obviously the James Webb has, has been able to determine, find some things in, uh, even in our own neighborhood on Jupiter, uh, uh, that, you know, and, and you were talking about some of the moons, uh, that it's, it's gotten some, some, not some direct, but indirect sure. evidence of possible, you know, uh, well, yeah, even as of recently, yep. uh, recently. we kind of talked a little bit about that, but not to get too veered off course yeah, there. Yeah. So, all right, scaling through our sequence here, where are we at, Kirk? Where are we at? Yeah, where, where, what have we gone over, and what do we have left? Well, we can, uh, I, yeah, we can do some more on SETI, the history of SETI, if we like. Uh, um, I wanted to. Uh, uh, we talked about, you know, some of the arguments for, uh, in in support of it being a paradox, uh, the Fermi paradox. Um, there are some, uh, there are some arguments, uh, well, let's not get into that. There, there's, uh, such that, why haven't we seen them? Well, maybe the aliens are xenophobes. Maybe, yeah, ma I, but, but that stuff is, uh, I know we, we're backtracking a little bit here. Yeah. So if you can, yeah. So go back through the sequence. Cause I feel like we're missing something here or we skipped over something. I just want to make sure we didn't skip over it. and it's okay if we did, it's not a big deal. Yeah, um, I, I hear you. I'll, I'll, uh, uh, really, like I said earlier, when we first started, I said we have way more information. Yeah, and I uh, yeah, I've got to uh, parse it, be able to parse it down a little better. Um, uh, but as far as you want to go over the uh, very quickly, you you asked about the satellites in in kind of in op in operation now. Um, you know, yeah, I was kind of curious the the sheer number because remember we started out with Hubble back in the '90s, and that was it for a long time. And then NASA to help supplement. They just retired it, I think, last year. They were flying, a, a, you know, they had a, I, I don't know what series jet they had, but, you know, the side of the of the fuselage would open up. Oh, And yeah. then a telescope. Well, I think it was really the James Webb sort of put it to bed. 
because that's how most of their IR was done. Was right. The observation was done through it. You know, they would they this would airplane fly flying up, around yeah. the sky trying to observe stuff whenever it could. Yep. Uh, and NASA has a, a, a satellite up currently that uh, specializes in the in the uh, dimming of the, the dimming method of, of stars, uh, planets going around a star, um, and that is the. Uh, Are you lost in the abyss of notes? <laughs> yeah. That's what happens when you get out of order, man. You can't jump. Hey, it's uh, again, it can be out of order because it's stapled. <laughs> it's a. Uh, yeah, uh, it's it's the the, the the trippist. I mean, it's it's a satellite that NASA put up that's that's done quite a bit, quite a quite a bit of good. Uh, the um, let's see, the uh, did you know when the first exoplanet was discovered? Is that a question for me or from the? Well, from uh, the yeah, chat? for you because you're here and anyone else. Uh, uh, anyway. When it was discovered, I don't remember. Yeah, you know, the first exoplanets were discovered only around pulsars in 1992. And so that was a, a bit of concern initially because pulsars are not the place that you would want to uh, try to get life to, to form. It's probably because it was just the easiest to see. Yeah, and that's exactly because the pulsar is is a, is a neutron star. It's that's pretty intense. Very yeah, it's a very very uh, spinning very rapidly and it is intense. Um, more uh, uh, thank you, geek. More notes is better than less. <laughs> but <laughs> in some situations, uh, uh, when you're drowning, it's uh, yeah. But uh, but the first. Real uh, exo Earth-like exoplanet uh, was in, in, in uh, 1995. Geek is correct on that one. Um, that's the one that uh, that really kind of got everybody excited because it it's again it was uh, it was in the Goldilocks zone, and uh, it was uh, in the uh, uh, around a star that that's not that the mainstream star, just like our sun, and I think an M M classification. Right. Um, so that was uh, you know that got people going a little bit. Uh, quite well, happy. ours is not M. Remember, it's L, is it not? It's G. G. That's right. You know why? You know why I always say M. Can you guess why? I uh, don't. Because in Star Trek lore, a an Earth-like planet is a class M. Oh, so uh, I see. I see. A, a planet that can that could support life, uh, that could support our life, is a class M. So, oh, um. Yep. Did somebody have another chat? Well, it's uh, let's see. Did we had someone? Oh, I got Latin out there. He's uh, there's a lot of questions coming through, so uh, <laughs> it's okay. Well, so here's the deal: if we have a bunch of questions come in and we don't see them all, we're sorry, but we're we're trying yeah. to get through them as fast as we can. Oh uh, well, let's see. Lightning Hawk said, "I can't really add anything to the conversation about telescopes, but if you guys oh. need any help with Star Trek Fleet Command, feel free to ask." Hey. <laughs> Hey. Oh, yeah. I, okay, so Fleet Command. All right, so let, all me, right, uh, let me dish this out real quick. I'm new at this game, and I, we talked about this yesterday. So the origin for us playing this game was purely out of a serendipitous situation, and it was because we wanted to do what we are now, right? And talking about yep. different astro situations and kind of giving some backbone. And then... I was viewing best times to uh, sit there and go, when when should we do this? And Twitch was like, hey, these are games you need to check out, maybe play, because you might have success. You know how Twitch does it. They want to help you. And it kept saying, hey, you need to play Star Trek games. And I'm like, for real? This is like... Anyway, so Fleet Command. I am glad we got a Fleet Command person on here that knows a little bit, because look... I feel like I'm bouncing around a little bit here because I just like want to accept all the missions, you know. Uh, that's kind of what I do at uh, what is it, No Man's Sky? No when Man's I would Sky. play No Man's Sky, I would just any mission. I don't care. I just do them all. So, but anyway, I appreciate you showing up. I do. I really do. So, thank you. Um. All right. I need to fight some other ships i think this thing said like hey man you need to do three level four or higher and it said locate so here we are i need to get here uh lightning by the way lightning hawk is says uh, yes you want to accept them all okay and do them as you can okay yeah i that's what i'm trying to do and then we finally are up to like a new ship and so maybe lightning hawk can help me out here 
I don't know if you can, but my goal is to try to play this game without actually spending like real currency, <laughs> unless later at a point where I just am like, yeah, I want my ship to look like that. Maybe, I, maybe I do. However, if it's possible, let me know. If you don't have to spend money to actually progress very far, that's my fear. Is a little bit of that. It says uh, he says uh, you can play it completely, one hundred percent free to play. Okay, all right. That's well, then I'm know. okay with that. It's okay. I'm good. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I feel a little bit better about my decision now. <laughs> it's it's very it's kind of. I just find it fascinating. You can do everything with this. You don't have to get on the keyboard. You, like you don't have to do nothing. It's so it's so easy. It does seem to be so automated in some ways. Yeah. All right. Um, so I need to fight some ships. Yeah. Sorry. If I blow somebody up. Uh, I think you only blown up one today, haven't you? No. Oh, I'm blowing no up more. Oh, okay. I guess I missed that. Well, when you blow those up, I'm going to very quickly, I'm going to run over the satellites that are that you've asked about several yeah, times. Yeah, I, I, so I'm kind of curious how many uh, satellites there are right now currently, because remember, I, like I said earlier, there was first just the one. The right? Hubble, yeah. The Great Hubble. Well, we got the, the Kepler Space Telescope. Kepler's dope. It's finding all the uh, exos, uh, exoplanets right now. Yep. And, and you know, it, it's funny. It has dates 2009 to 2018, but it's still going. I know that. So, yep. uh, anyway, that was NASA's first uh, space telescope dedicated to finding exoplanets. Uh, use, it used the transit method. It, uh, it detected thousands of them. Uh, in fact, uh, more than half, I think we read. Yep. Uh, the, you get the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, TESS. That's a... Uh, one that was launched in 2018, I guess to replace, it's supposed to kind of maybe maybe to replace uh, the Kepler, but certainly hasn't uh, needed to be replaced. Sure. Uh, that was their that was their next generation uh, exoplanet hunter, and it, it, it just surveys a much larger portion of the sky than Kepler can. Right. So it, it's you know it's just uh, the same basic uh, uh, technique and procedure. Then of course they the Hubble Space Telescope uh, is still out there. Uh, it, it, it's not specifically designed for exoplanet detection, but you know it has done its done its work. And then the the, the Spitzer Spitzer Space Telescope. Uh, it's an infrared the telescope. triple S. It's what the triple S. Yes, yeah, sure. it's uh, 2003. It has a 2020. It looks like uh, end, but I don't think it, it's still up there. I know, and I think they're still using it. Uh, it's infrared scope. Uh, it's able. It's able to penetrate. You know, through a lot of things we can't see uh, visually, and so know nothing about because of the large amount of gas, dust, and clouds. Yep. You know that just exist in space and blocking. You know, we want to see through that. Well, the infrared can, and and the Spitzer scope has certainly done that. And it can also uh, examine the the atmospheres of some of the exoplanets that we've. And see, we've found. that's kind of the. I think the cool thing is, is we've we've been so. I wonder if they thought about this 20, 30, 40 years ago, like, hey, instead of sending up an optical telescope, maybe we should send up something that uh, that sees the non-visible. I just yeah. wonder if, if we, it was yeah. a technology issue or if it was just an ignorance issue or if it was just like, oh, surely we can see better with just having a big giant mirror and, and floating around us and we can see stuff, right? Yeah. Well, because on the ground, we were already doing radio, like immensely right right but there are some limitations to our, our atmosphere does provide limitations uh right so the, that's ergo, why... the ir component is yep. like to me i'm just i'm a little perplexed at at the direction i think because when you see the ir images and the non-visible spectrum there's just so much more information oh yeah absolutely now now, now to, they have been putting up x-ray telescopes for quite some time uh, okay. The Chandra, okay, uh, named after the, the, the actually uh, we were talking about 2001 Space Odyssey earlier. Chandra was the uh, doctor who created HAL, the computer. Oh, that's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, but the, the, that that one uh, I think was uh, uh, X rays are are very uh, you know there's a lot of things to put X ray out uh, up there and they're very usually very interesting. Uh, uh, black holes, for instance, uh, put out a lot of X rays, but. Um, and then there's that there's a there's a scope that we have that, that sits in the Lagrange point uh, or, or the between the sun and the Earth, um, the point at which it is being pulled on uh, by both equally. Uh, so it's much closer to Earth, obviously, but uh, right. And that that's for stability. And okay. so that that one I can't remember the name of that one right away. 
but uh, let me finish this up real quick. Raptor sure. Spitzer, then of course the James Webb Telescope. Uh, that's that's you know that that's it's already in the history books, and it's gonna who knows what it's what all it's gonna do for us. Um, and then there's the uh, the and I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher this because I know it's a uh, uh, I know it's one of those words that when you say it right, oh yeah, but it's a chi a cheops, C H E O P S. Okay. And leave it to the Europeans to. You know, the character is characterizing exoplanets through observation and photometry satellites. So there you go. That's a mouthful. It's a European Space Agency uh, deal. Man, and, this and, place is busy. Yep. Oh, you know what? And also Lightning Hawk says uh, uh, this game is celebrating its fifth anniversary this month. Nuh uh. Yep. And he said there's also, uh, uh, yeah, five years old this month. Lots of anniversary stuff happening in the game this month. Nice. Well, then, hey, even more serendipitous that I that we picked it, right? Yep. And Geek's saying, yeah, so like a good time to start playing. And uh, he's, I, I appreciate that. Yes, uh, yes, it is. So, Lightning Hawk, kind of just a little bit of background. I mean, I know you're just kind of showing up. So, we started kind of goofing around with this back in the summer. It was my son and I. And then we would have customers come. And I say customers. If you watch an old video, it'll make more sense. We used to do the live stream in our shop. Yeah, I'm not have, the son, by the way. We have... Oh, yeah, he's not my son. <laughs> my son's way more stoic and handsome than he is. Oh, I agree. Uh, I would agree with that. Uh, yeah, so but... he's got a big, giant, curly head, too. Is what it's... Yeah, you're, so, yeah. But thing. we were doing this, like, philosophy, like, slash, we'd build stuff on there, and we kind of just wanted to keep doing it. So we, not, I don't want to say I took a hiatus, but we've been kind of developing this for a little bit. So, we again, we appreciate you stopping by, so... Um, and then, you know, I guess that curation of stuff in Discord is going to be really fun <laughs> because that way, if Kirk can't get to everything, you can still see it. You know what I mean? It's like, it's just, there's just too much. And we're, we're, and we're going, we'll find our stride. I, I have faith. So we will. All, All right. right. So I'm here. I, dude, this is like, man, look how busy this is. This is like, there's so many people here. Yeah, they uh, the Drake equations exploded on this one. This one right? yeah. I know, right? It, the Drake, the 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 Drake equation is in a full effect. All right, so yeah. what's next on the old info there, bud? Well, what would be next? Uh, what? Be... Oh, and by the way, if you hadn't noticed, his name is Kirk, and my name is Chris, and we thought that was kind of funny too. So and my my name really is Kirk. So yeah, I mean, I know a... it's it ain't. We ain't trying to be cheesy, okay? And, I mean, and, we are cheesy, but it ain't, you know. And, of course, your name uh, is Christopher yeah, Pike. Chris, yeah, I, I guess. I don't know. Well, yeah. Well, he's actually uh, the, uh, the only, the, currently the only series I believe in production right now is, uh, is, is, is he's in, he's the lead in, the, you know, uh, running the, uh, the. I'm just going to, it says I can attack the ship. I don't know why. I guess it was a mission I collected. I feel like I'm just haphazardly going through this. Stuff. Oh, well, thank you, Lightning Hawk. He's now following. Oh, I appreciate it, bud. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, there's okay. So a lot, a lot of new stuff has come out. Um, what was on? The, what was next in our curation of info? Well, let's see. That would be the. Uh... Hmm. I'll blow up that ship, I'm a Paul. nice dude. You didn't blow him up? He said, hey, let him go. He says, what? You let him escape? I mean, hey, man. Yeah, My call, you, you gave me a job. Don't be sweating me about it. And sometimes I'll just make a decision. Yeah, that's right. And uh, as the captain, you should uh, certainly, I mean, if it's the wrong decision. What are you going to do? you going to come fight me? <laughs> he might. I'm getting all aggressive with it. <laughs> And, but then again, I want to know exactly why, who, the, why, if you're in Starfleet, and, and maybe you can answer that, Lightning Hawk. Is, is he, uh, like, in Starfleet? It seems to be, but yet he's following, taking orders from, uh, this looks like a, a warlord yeah, almost. Yeah, why don't we attack this dude? He looks like a big, bad shit. And he actually was given orders to blow up a Federation ship, which he did, which I was, you know. I I, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I don't know why that happened. Oh, well, let me, let, let, let me, let, I'm sorry, this is a. Uh, I, I gotta. We gotta say this. Lightning Hawk is giving a little little bio, and uh, uh, a bit about me. I'm a 50 plus year old lady that loves Star Trek. Well, well, very nice. I love that. I've I've been a speaking Trek of. Since. I've been playing uh, sci-fi. I, I I don't know how old 
Kirk is, but I'm uh, also in the same. I used I was I used to joke. I said, "Man, you're gonna meet so many Star Trek people on here because he he's he's my resident Star Trek guru." So, you know, we defer to him on all the Star Trek lore. I guess we'll call yeah, it. You probably should, since you were just now. <laughs> but they're 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 just they just got into the thing, so they're they're watching the the, the very first series. Yeah, we uh, have Paramount on uh, YouTube. Paramount Plus. So, yeah. yeah, we've been watching Star Trek. Every, and it's kind every, of fun, you know, and because it, it has all like all the new graphics and stuff, the original Star Trek. So I don't know; it's been fun. Yeah, and and you got you know well you I don't know if you watched any of the Next Generation or any at all any of it. I know you had a history of uh, kind of shying away from Star Trek. Mm, yeah. Well, because of us, yeah, whatever. Was, I know. know we talked about that yesterday. Sibling. Uh, yeah, sibling rivalry. overload. And, and some people could really geek out on it. I don't know if Lightning Hog, if you did. Uh, I stopped short of bringing the blueprints to high school, to school, and opening them up in class. Uh, others didn't, and they, they, at least at the time, paid dearly. But they're probably, they're probably thriving now. Right. <laughs> um, anyway, it's uh, maybe they're engineers. Yeah. And they're in their own way, I guess. Yeah, they, yeah, it, it would definitely could spur you on to be an engineer. Right. Um. You know, I, I haven't asked this, and I should ask, like, when people come on, because I always, like, wonder, like, how they came up with their screen name, right? Right. And so, I was, you know, I wonder that about her. Sometimes it's obvious, you know? Um, so, uh, but anyway, I just always, it's kind of like, remember back in the day, since since Kirk will know this and Lightning Hawk will know this, I don't know if Geek would know this, but... Like you know, back in the day when you when you picked your uh, your email address, it was kind of fun, right? It's like a little vanity thing. Yeah. And I feel like you could always tell somebody's personality type by their email address. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I just I used to think that was funny because like, <laughs> and then every now and then you get one that said it was AOL, and you're like, whoa, how old are you? Oh, oh god. <laughs> I mean that the 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 world was littered with AO, unused AOL discs. Uh, I mean, you would you would literally get one. We used to talk about you can't quit AOL. You, you'd literally get one three or four <laughs> times a week in the mail. I, I just was thinking, man, how do they? Uh, how, how can they produce so many? So uh, funny, dude. So many uh, things. We we had that was a horrible time. I mean, <laughs> it was good, but it was it sucked. Well, looking back on it, it was not you know even if, even when it was going on, I knew it was it was horrible. Because uh, I mean, you, you know, the sounds embedded in your mind, the the, the, the the getting online sound, and and when you get excited about going from a fourteen four to a twenty eight eight modem, it, it's just even though that was the best of the time, a fifty six fifty six k, it just inherently I think everybody knew that, that, that this is not right. You know, this is the this is before the, this is pre dawn, and 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 Lord let the dawn occur because I need to I need to get out of the K's and into the M's uh, as far as speed goes. Um, Hey, maybe we should ask Lightning Hawk, what should I do with uh, this dude? Should I take him out or should I help him? I don't know. I, I get, I tend to lean towards the the nicer of the of the two usually. Yeah. Except the uh, Federation shit. Uh, well, but that's because the other dude said, hey, pick a side. Yeah. I thought I'd get to the Federation ship and then like he'd be like, hey, bro. Yes, like, did. don't blow me up. And then, no, it wasn't even an option. I had to blow him up. Um, let's see. Select an account. She's saying, I remember back in the early 90s having to select my account name. Oh, an email. Oh, yeah. Lim limited to eight characters. Yeah, I remember the some of the limitations. That's not very fun. Uh, she says, click on the rewards button and select the best oh, reward. I'm not oh, sure I didn't even think about that. Oh, and that, that that and that dictates which way to go on that. Okay, well, I didn't know you could do that. I didn't even see that button over. I, did, I didn't either. Man, fine, I'll do this. I'm not playing. Well, you got clearly the one with two two pictures, not just one. I knew it. What happened? You're with Starfleet. You are with Starfleet. That's what he said. I'm well, gonna. You're, I guess should I attack him? You're riding. You're riding in a Starfleet. Might ship. as well. I got my Corvette. Oh yeah, your fancy ship, port ship. Well, uh, but the only the only things uh, really that we had left in the in the show notes really were the kind of the history of SETI, notable milestones. Yeah. And uh, 
and then we uh, I, I specifically wanted to pull up some stuff on you know red dwarfs yeah so we're gonna tie this up with a little bit of a bow because we mentioned the fermi paradox and those dudes at lunch you know after their big days of looking at making atom bombs yeah Manhattan they project. they uh said hey where is everybody and then the drake equation came out and said hey i don't know where everybody is but maybe this is an equation that we can use and then we launch a bunch of satellites and then we find out what how many what are the most prominent stars in in our in our galaxy uh red dwarfs by 75 quarters i mean I wasn't really, I wasn't aware of that. I'd forgotten it, I, I, I guess. I mean, um, that is huge. So Most of which can't be seen with the naked eye. Exactly. So dim. And so we didn't know that, right? We no. didn't know that the non-visible, that's what I mentioned earlier, the non-visible sort of spectrum right. is to me the most fascinating component. Because when we start talking about like, you know, Europa and Ganymede and like all the discoveries that we've mm -hmm. been making about that, I mean, not we, I say we, we as humankind, right? you know, and then you look at the uh, sheer amount of information we're getting and then, the next, then you find out like, oh, okay, G type stars are one of the least common stars, the one of the least right. common stars in our, in, in our galaxy. So then you shift it over to what is the most common and that's the red dwarf. Right. And, and then you go, well, how does a red dwarf happen? Well, it's because they're old. And then you're going, well, they uh, so they live longer than they, they live long. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is to that point, I felt like there's so many parallels here to why we haven't heard anything. Well, and and and, and there's a lot of you know, it's still it's still in debate. Can a red dwarf, uh, red dwarf star, you know, support a habitable planet? Because um, we don't know what is the missing link there that we're trying to figure out if there what can happen. Right. Oh, if uh, if life can can begin if those photosynthesis. Well, the, 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 specifically, the, yeah. it's how we understand it right, right here on our planet. Right. And whether the uh, the conditions will be right for those primordial ingredients to, you know, carbon, hydrogen. I mean, on my brain right now, I'm just I don't if y'all can't tell. I'm it's just racking. I'm like bouncing stuff all literally off inside of my head like trying to fathom this because anyway it's just like i said all right so red dwarfs tell me about it yeah let's finish up with that it's uh and i was very curious uh, uh it's uh yeah i kind of asked well the possibility of an earth like earth like planet supporting life around a red dwarf star uh, is complex and it's still still debated uh whether there are challenges uh while there are challenges associated with it uh, Red Dwarf systems, there are also some, some advantages, some potential advantages that could make it possible. Uh, um, the challenges uh, is Red Dwarfs are, are very are very low luminosity, which means they're going to put out less heat. Right. So the planet, you're going to have to be closer. Uh, the, yeah, the, so it changes the habitable habitable zone to like a like you said a closer range, right? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, for, the Goldilocks for, zone, I guess. Yeah, and then, and I guess the definition of that is not really a, a distance; it's a uh, it's uh, where where liquid water can 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 exist, right? So with a red dwarf, it's going to have to be you know more more in line with maybe a Venus distance from the from their sun. Um, so uh, it's uh, they're, they're cooler, they're, they're they're less light, so you have to be closer. Uh, uh, emit much less heat than our sun. This means that the Earth-like planet would would need to orbit very close, uh, you know, to get liquid water available. Um, now there's something the challenge uh, also with that is uh, if a planet is that close to a star to a star it usually gets uh, locked tidal locked which means that only it's like our moon is only one side will face the star ever and it could be they call it like some could have what they call an eyeball effect, eyeball if, effect? It, if it has say like maybe well, like if you said, if it's tidally locked, and yeah, it, they, it's, they call it like an eyeball effect, right? I think is some of the terms that I've heard okay. before. Anyway, sorry. And that that means that its its year would be the same length as its day, basically. Uh, right. Like, like the moon, you know, if you were on the moon, a day would be twenty eight days, Earth days. 
which happens to be the orbit of the year as well. Um, so a, a tidal locking can, can really limit uh, life formation, uh, although it could also be a benefit on the uh, on that on the zone, the the transition zone, where you know you got the sun on and then the and then the, the constant dark in the sun. There's kind of a twilight. If you had an atmosphere, it would be always twilight, basically. I guess sure. um, that that can that can help. Uh, so that can help life. Uh, another another disadvantage is that uh, red, red dwarfs are known for their flare activity, uh, solar flares. And so being that close, you not you don't want to be close, you know, when the, when the star is ejecting matter uh, out into space. And if you happen to be in the way, that could uh, you know, that could make for a very bad day. Uh, uh, there are some uh, advantages. Uh, uh, the fact that they have a, a very long lifespan. Uh, red dwarfs are, are the longest lifespan of any stars. Uh, so that would certainly provide enough time uh, for life to, to, to evolve and, and be able to, to flourish, perhaps. Uh, they, they think there might be a, a, an advantage to the red light, red light advantage, because, you know, UV is on the higher end of the spectrum. Uh, you know, they, they use UV to, to sterilize, you know, things. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, and that's uh, so that, that, you know, it can sterilize life as well. Uh, red light is much less uh, subtle and, and less dangerous to living organisms. Uh, so that, that who knows what that could uh, what kind of life that, that could produce uh, uh, and then the uh, uh, potential for liquid water you know it's low and it's low luminosity and it's, it's cooler but it could, it's absolutely a planet at the right distance could maintain you know a thick atmosphere and uh, you know and have liquid water so right based on and then there's still a lot uh, uh, quite frankly the answer for a lot of the questions I had was uh, we don't know yet uh, I know we We're just don't know the same spot. So they're still in debate, but uh, red. I, I have a feeling that you know life generally finds a way, uh, and to steal a bit of a the Jurassic Park thing, uh, you know that's exactly what they say. Life finds a way. Uh, that is interesting. Yeah. No, I do agree with you on that because when we start getting into some of our solar system activities, uh, especially stuff around Jupiter. Um, that's so fascinating. The, it is the Jovian super system. Super fascinating. I'm like so excited to start getting the information all pulled together in a, in a little nuggety fashion for y'all. So, um, what else, what else do we have Kirk before we have to sign off? Well, that's, that's pretty much the end of the, uh, the, the, the show notes. Um, um, we could certainly, um, uh, kind of give an overview. Uh, I mean, it's the, you know, the Fermi paradox is how, it's, you know, the Drake equation is a tool in which to, uh, to kind of quantify, although it's not a not a true equation, uh, the number is it's really done what it, it, it's done its goal, and that's to really spur conversation and, and, and talk and debate, and it certainly has been a lot of debate about it. Yeah, uh, and I think there always will be. It's an age-old question, um, you know, one I find very fascinating. It is. So we we'll, we will continue the debate. I guess we'll call it tomorrow. What are we supposed to do tomorrow? Do you remember? Well, I think uh, we had some open ideas. Yeah, I think some things were open. We uh, some of the stuff that was actually originally on for tomorrow, we we covered today. Okay. And, uh, so, um, you know, yeah, because I, I felt like we're you know disregard. Uh, hey, I got lost in my my ocean of notes. Uh, yeah, which I did. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so maybe tomorrow we'll do some of that stuff we were talking about for next week. I'm, I'm going to start digging into it tonight and tomorrow morning. Maybe. Yeah. I'm gonna... uh, Cause we have some stuff already compiled. So, uh, so yeah, I guess we'll stay tuned to making sure we'll, uh, I guess figure out what we're going to do tomorrow, but it'll obviously be related to what we're talking about today. Uh, and well, then what did you have another question? Well, no, I, I just said uh, the chat's kind of going here. Uh, uh, Lightning Hawk is a, uh... And and geek, let me see. Let's see. First, it's uh, is she saying uh, blah blah blah. She's saying you mentioned a shop, and I, this is a very good question. You mentioned a shop. What kind of shop? Yeah, it's a toy and hobby shop. So yeah. we uh we have skateboards, and these are like my tooth favorite. I guess we'll call it from the shop, and they're still for sale. So if they if somebody wants to buy it, then I'll have to take it to the shop and switch it's, it out. Uh, all things RC remote control. Also, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, all yeah, I do repairs game. and stuff like that, custom builds. We did a seven, eight hour <laughs> marathon, not me, on Twitch with a customer. 
and uh, he never had built like an RC car before. So we took a nostalgic kit, and then so Lightning Hawk, since she's she's been around, good old pop culture, uh, the uh, Punky Brewster. If you know who Punky Brewster is, she did a show. It was called uh, Girls Will Be Boys, and it was where she built an RC car called a Tamaya Frog. Tamaya is still around today. So um, a manufacturer of RC. Yeah, it's a many, yeah, they make models, and they make paints and accessories and tools, and they're out of Japan. They've been around forever. Um, and some dude just blew up a ship in front of me. That was kind of funny. I guess these are other people playing at the same time. Anyway. Uh, I just caught me off guard. So uh, we built it on there and we painted it as well. We had a customer, uh, well, we had a, a somebody on the live stream. We had a couple people that day uh, on there. And we were, yeah, seven hours. I got on there like eight times. Yeah. And, and, and unbelievably, you were there. I re, you were still broadcasting every time. I finished a small bottle of sake on there as well. <laughs> that could have uh, helped. And then it wasn't bad. I mean, it's a small one. It wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, and then we just talked about building and anyway so we we try to have fun that's really the the origin of it uh and we we treat this you know as all things fun as a hobby and we uh we i guess in the beginning we're promoting mental health through hobbies at the same time so uh and we still do that we Uh, still we still want y'all to have fun with your escapisms lightning hawk remembers the punky brewster show i know isn't that crazy i anyway uh, and uh, Geek, good, I'm glad you came back. Uh, he said, "He said, see you on the next episode." Yeah, we appreciate y'all. And uh, oh yeah, what do you have to say? You gonna say it at the end? Oh, he'll, he'll uh, say it at the end. All right, so you have to stay positive and stay groovy, and then stay cosmic. There you go. And then we'll see you later. Absolutely. Y'all have a good night.